I had to look online to see how to pronounce this one. And I think it's Martyrs. I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not too sure. The line itself is said in the movie like a few times. I, I can't quite remember, I think it's Martyrs, or maybe, it's not Martyrs, I don't think, I think it's Martyrs. Uh, that's ir irrelevant anyway. Um, so for, the, for those of you who haven't heard of this movie before, it's a pretty well-known movie in the horror genre. It's, it's, it's a big movie in the horror genre. When people make those lists titled Most Disturbing Movies or like Most Disturbing Horror Movies, you, you know those kind of lists that people make? This movie often ends up somewhere on the list as the most disturbing movie. Like, it ends up somewhere on those lists most of the time. Um, so how did I come to watching this? Um, surprisingly enough, the Horror Channel showed this, and the Horror Channel is a channel in the UK. If you've seen my Death Factory Bloodletting review, you'll know. Like, I already explained this, but basically it's a channel here in the UK on Sky, which shows, for the most part, it shows really random, obscure, shitty, old horror movies. Like, really obscure ones. It does show the occasional classic though, like Hellraiser, The House of the Drip Blood, Texas Jones from Massacre, etc, etc. And I was surprised to find out they show Martyrs, so I recorded it, of course, when I saw this. Like, I've been wanting to see this movie for a while, because, so, like, of course I heard about it beforehand, so I was like, I'll get around to watching it one day, and this was the day I got around to watching it. So, for the, for the story now, I don't want to give too much away. But basically this girl, as a kid, she was kidnapped and she was held captive for a certain amount of time. I'm not sure if it's like a few months or maybe a few years, I can't remember. But she's held captive for a, a, quite a long period of time. And basically she spends the time being tortured, she's like starved. And she's basically isolated for like a few years. And she, she like gets tortured and starved. And then she manages, she manages to escape after like a year or a few months, something like that. And then the film jumps, to, cuts to when she's an adult, like 10 or 20 years later. And she believes she has tracked down the people that tortured her as a kid. She thinks she has found them. So she's gonna get revenge on the people she thinks tortured her as a kid. The two people which she believes she's tracked down the two people. So now she's gonna get revenge on them. And the movie goes off from there. So I did like this movie. I, th I thought it was a great movie. Um, it's um, it's a psychological horror. It's not like a visual kind of thing. They do have some pretty gruesome imagery sometimes, but it's nothing excessive. And it, it is more of a psychological kind of thing. Um, okay, so about the movie, what should I say? Okay, so it's uh, entertaining, I guess. It's interesting. Um, the movie sounds really simple to start off with. Because it's, like, what did I just tell you? Um, the girl thinks she's located the two people that tortured her as a kid. So now she's going to get revenge. So it sounds like a really basic revenge movie. But there's a revelation, a really effective revela revelation. I, w I wouldn't call it a twist. It's more of a re revelation. But a plot development. Halfway through the movie, the plot evolves into something so much more. So you think the movie is like this really simple thing. This really simple act of this girl just getting revenge on the people she believes wronged her as a kid. But there's a revelation about halfway through the movie which causes the story to evolve to something so much more. Like the movie get, just gets a whole new layer added onto it halfway through the movie. It just, everything get like the shit hits the fan halfway through the movie and it gets a lot more complicated than it was before. I, I really loved the revelation. Like the, the direction the movie goes in after the halfway mark, I was like, you know, I, you know, I was like, I'm really liking this. I like where this movie is going. It's it's really interesting how the the like the second half of the movie is completely different to the first half of the movie. It's just a sudden change of everything. Like the story, like it's a game changing revelation. That, like everything changes halfway through the movie when you find out what's been going on. It, I really dug it. I really liked what happened halfway through the movie. It's a great revelation. And this movie is really un unpredictable as well. Like, you, you really, you, you, you won't know what's going on. I mean, it's unpredictable. Let's, let's say that. It's, it's a pretty unpredictable mo movie and it has a great shock moment. Like, that revelation really got me. I, like, the, I really didn't see it coming. Like, the movie doesn't hint at it at all. So when it does come up, it is a big shock. It is like, okay, uh, okay, wow. I really, I really like the direction. I, I, it really got me. Um, one thing I, I went to, f the first half of the movie, I, 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 I liked it, 
I, I know a lot of people criticize the second half of the movie for being too slow or boring. And I do understand because what actually happens for the second half of the movie, I do understand why you would think it's slow or boring because it is, it is like nothing really happens for the second half of the movie. I guess it just, you know, opinions will be opinions, I guess. Like, I do understand why people wouldn't like the second half of the movie. Personally, I liked it. I actually preferred the second half of the movie to the first half. The thing is, with the first half of the movie, what happens? The girl that was kidnapped and tortured as a kid, she has these visions of this ghost, like this, um, she's running away from her imagination, basically. She's having these visions of, like, a ghost, like, chasing her. There's, like, this ghostly, um figure chasing her. So we have uh, quite a few, like three or four sequences of her being chased by this like ghostly figure. And I just didn't find that too entertaining. It was a bit monotonous. Like by the, like I didn't mind it the first two times, but by the third or fourth time, I was kind of like, uh, okay, I get it. It's, it's all in her head. I, I, you know, this is a bit repetitive. Let's kind of stop now. I, I wasn't a fan of those trace sequences with her being chased by the ghost. I just felt they weren't too entertaining. They were, I just felt as if there wasn't much suspense or anything in those sequences. They were just a bit, a bit repetitive, I guess, a bit boring. I wasn't a fan of them. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't like bored, but um, compared to the rest of the film, I was kind of like, okay, let's move on. I'm not, I'm not a fan of these sequences. But don't get me wrong. I still loved the first half of the film. Like it, you know, it's a great situation, great dilemma. You, you, you know, it's really interesting to watch. Like you really want to know what's going to happen next. But then the second half of the film is like a whole new level for me. I really enjoyed the second half of the film. And I know the, 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 dinner, the dinner scene is like a big... It seems to be like an iconic scene of the film, the dinner scene, because of how shocking and unexpected it is. But the thing is, I watched that scene on YouTube a long time ago, so I knew what, I knew what was going to happen. I was, just, I was sitting there waiting for what happened to happen, because I had seen the scene on YouTube like ages ago. Even if I had not spot that scene for myself on YouTube, it would have been spoiled for me anyway because before this movie was shown on the Hard Channel, they do they had they did an inter interview with the director. They show an interview with the director before the movie is shown, and he's speaking about you know how how much of an impact it had on the audience, like when it first came out and stuff. And they show clips of the film as he's saying this, and they 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 show the resolution of the di of the dinner scene. They so they show the shock moment of the dinner scene. Um, doing the interview with the director right before the movie is shown. So either way, I would have seen the coming. So like, I'm trying to appreciate that scene for what how shocked I would have been had I not had this ball for me. So I, I see why a lot of people really praise that scene for being really like shocking and unexpected. I do see how where people are coming from when they you know when they praise the scene. Uh, what else is there? Um, the acting is this is a I think it's French. I'm not sure. It's a foreign film. I think it was French. I haven't seen the film for a while, so I can't remember. So acting-wise, I'm not sure. Like I, like I always say, when you're watching a foreign film, because people aren't speaking English, it's kind of hard to tell whether or not they're good actors or not. It's 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 just difficult to tell if someone's acting well or not in a, when they're speaking in a different language. But screams are like they're universal. Screaming is universal. So when someone screams, you'll know if they're screaming or not, regardless of which language they're in. So when someone screamed in this film. Whether or not he was in agony or fear or whatever, you believed it. Like I, I the acting was good in that department. I, like I, as for just normal acting, I guess it it seemed fine to me. But again, I can't really judge because I obviously I don't speak French. Um, what else is there? Um, I didn't find it too dis. I didn't find it disturbing or anything. Like I've been desensitized, as I always say. Um, I will admit. I will admit. The idea behind the film is pretty nasty, like what happens to the victims in this film, what happens to the people that get caught up in this thing, which I'm not saying what it is because it's a spoiler, but when people get are a victim to this thing, it is pretty gnarly the f just thinking about, you know, if you were caught up in this situation, I, I would just be like, okay, you know, I, I would just try to kill, I, I would, well, okay, well I'm kind of getting the spoilers there, so I'm not going to, say much on the subject but like when the cab when you find out like halfway through the movie the revelation and you basically there's a revelation where you realize the character is fucked the character is screwed and it's a great build-up there's like a five or ten minute build-up of the character they know they're screwed and they're kind of accepting the f they're not necessarily accepting the fate but they're, they're kind of just there they know what's gonna hap happen to them and there's just nothing they can do about it, and they're just waiting 
for like 10 minutes for the thing to happen to happen. And like as an audience member, I was sitting there kind of like, oh my, like, oh my God. Like I, like, like I had like a sinking feeling in my stomach. Like the feeling of, I didn't feel, like there was a feeling of dread over me and fear for the character. Like it wasn't like disturbing, I wouldn't say, but there was like a sinking feeling in my stomach for the character. Like the thought of being in this situation is pretty, um, pretty scary. It's like situations which are out of your control are always scary and this film did they well. Like situations that are out of your control and this film portrayed a situation that is out of your control really well. It, like I did genuinely get a sinking feeling in my stomach. I was like, oh my god. Like, like it's a great like 10 minutes build up of like 10 minutes of dialogue but it's like a great build up and you're just waiting you're waiting for what to happen to happen and you know the characters just sitting there they know they can't do anything about it and they're just waiting for it um the acting seemed fine from there as well like the way the um actor kind of like just waited for their demise and they kind of knew what was co coming i i like the way they handled that uh, the special effects for the few gore moments they are are fantastic. Some people get shot in this film, and the gunshots are like hardcore, like you know, massive, like like explosions. Like when someone gets shot in the heart, there's a proper like the chest blows open. Like it's like it's that Rambo standards, you know. Like not much people get shot in this film. Only a few people do. So I wouldn't say it's at Rambo standards because like millions of people get killed in that film. But I'm saying. When the few people that do get shot is kind of like at Rambo's four standards in terms of how gory it is when they get shot. It's great. The special effects are great. Um, the ending, what they do for the ending, there's a question they present to you. This is like a common question which like you kind of just talk to your friends about it. This is a commonly brought up question in society in general where people just ask each other like this is some social commentary I guess in this film if you want to dig that deep into it. But um the, like basically they present a common question to you but and I knew they weren't gonna answer it like it's an interesting question which everyone like kind of thinks about every day but they don't answer it um, which is uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that because when filmmakers present these kind of questions to us and they don't answer it I it's, it kind of seems kind of pointless it's kind of like you're not making us aware of this question this is the sort of thing we think about anyway um, like you know I'm like making people who weren't aware of it aware of it before because everyone thinks about this um, I, I kind of see it, when filmmakers don't answer these kind of questions, like if you're going to present it in the movie, I feel as if you should answer it to at least have a go at answering it, otherwise why else would you bring it up in the movie? It's like, you know, it's just like, take a shot at answering it then, for fun, like regardless of whether or not it's disappointing, give it a shot, give us, just have take a shot of answering it, just for fun. Uh, but with this movie, I didn't mind because the question was it made it was part of the plot like it made sense as to why the question was being posed like the question wasn't being posed for the sake of being deep or any, you know that sort of stuff it was posed because it was like part of the story it was genuinely part of the story and they don't answer the question like that's really predictable you knew they weren't going to answer it like they were going to end it somehow without answering it you, you could tell they weren't going to answer it but I didn't mind like, I didn't get pissed off or anything because the question was part of the movie and I was like oh it, like the filmmaker is imposing it just to be tr try to make us think about it and trying to be deep and then they're not creative not creative enough to you know answer it they're putting it in the film because it is just part of the story it's part of the story it makes sense as to why the question is in the story and the thing is they didn't answer it instead the movie end they don't answer it but the movie ends it end. Well, the movie ends, but they don't answer the question. But the way they end this movie, I really liked. It was so badass. The final act for, from the character at the end of the movie was just so cool. I really liked it. Like the final line of the movie, I really got a kick out of it. When the character said that final line and did a certain action, I was like, bravo. I, I really, really liked the ending to this movie. Just. It, it's just so, what the character did was badass. I really liked it. It, it, it was so fun. I, I just really liked it. Um, I think, uh, I think I have everything this, that's everything I have this here, I think. Yeah, okay, so Martyrs, um, I enjoyed the second half a lot more than the first half. I understand the majority seem to think the second half is a lot more lackluster because it's not much happens in the second half of the movie. But personally, I, I found what was happening, I, I, I found what was happening in the second half of the movie more entertaining than the first half of the movie. Uh, 
The first half of the movie was a bit monotonous and repetitive because you have a bunch of chase sequences. This, the girl's being chased by a ghost and it happens like three or four times and it does get a bit repetitive. I was like, oh, okay, this is a bit boring now. Like, it's not, it's not really suspenseful or anything like that. The story starts off really basic, but it evolves into something that's so much more halfway through the movie. The, the, the little revelation, I wouldn't call it a twist, but the little revelation halfway through the movie makes it, it turns the movie into something so much more. It makes it so much more entertaining and interesting. And it is a genuine oh shit moment halfway through the movie. Like, when this revelation comes, it is a genuine like oh my god moments and the sinking feeling you get in your stomach for the characters it is like a really I did genuinely feel like oh my god for the characters like it, the situation is pretty horrific I'll say it's pretty gruesome uh, like it, like not gruesome as in gory but what, what like just imagining being in this situation is pretty nasty um, so I think that's all I have to say for Marty's oh yeah and the ending the ending is awesome so um definitely check it out. It's a really interesting film. If you haven't seen it, just check it out. It's really, really interesting. It's I really loved it. Like this was the sort of film I like this was the sort of film where I didn't want to go to the toilet. Like I, I you know like when I went to the toilet I was pissed off that I had to go because I just wanted to sit there and watch this movie start to finish because I was so like I was really into this movie. I was really engrossed into it. I was really re I was really into this movie. It it ha it had all of my attention. Like this is the first film for a while to completely like grab onto my attention, and I, I, no, it wasn't a single point in the whole entire film where I kind of let myself down and like let my guard down or anything like that. I, I was completely invested into this film from start to finish. It, it's a great film. Aside from the chase sequences, I was kind of like, oh, this is a bit repetitive. But even then, I, I was still entertained. Like they weren't, they weren't boring, but they, like they weren't boring. I was still entertained doing them, but I was kind of like, oh, this may be one too many chase scenes. But yeah, it's a great movie. Definitely check it out. Definitely recommend it. Now I'm gonna go to the spoiler section of the review. So leave now if you don't want spoilers. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. Here are the spoilers. Um, the shock moment, which I really, really loved. I was, I loved the shock moment. Um, when when she finds that girl in the basement with the metal blindfold on, which has been like embedded into her skull, and then she like pries it out of her skull like the screws. For those, of you, for those of you who haven't seen the movie, the girl who was kidnapped as a kid, she brings her friend along with her. She kills the people who she believes kidnapped her as a kid in their house. And then she kills herself. She goes insane and kills herself. But So then her friend, which she brought with her to the house, is left there with like the two dead... Well, the dead bodies are the family that she killed because she thinks the family tortured her as a kid. And then she kills herself and then this leaves the girl's friend just there with all of the dead bodies so like now that she's dead it's, I was like okay this 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 is like only a quarter of the way through the movie what the hell's gonna happen next and then she investigates the house and in the basement she finds all these like futuristic science fiction-y kind of cells and it turns out this was the fact that she was right this family did torture her as a kid she was right because like that's kind of like a fun thing throughout the movie is did these people actually torture her or is she just deluded uh, it, so it turns out this is actually the family that tortured her as a kid. So she, um, her friend is the only one left alive. She investigates the basement and finds this girl, which is another victim of the family. She's got this metal blindfold on her and it's kind of like embedded into her skull. Like these screws, screws are like piercing her skull, which um, prevents her from taking the, blind, the blindfold off. So then the friend, she like grabs like a screwdriver, pries it out of her skull and manages to get it off. So the girl must have been blindfolded for like a few years, I guess. I guess she was like held captive in, in isolation for like three years or something. So she goes insane and kill. Well, this is what she does. She starts bashing her head against the wall. She's going insane, which is understandable. And then the next thing you know, her head explodes. Her head just literally explodes after she's bashing her head on the wall. So at this point, you know, the friend is like lying on the floor, like, what the fuck just happened? And like, it's even, even I was like that, like just sitting there in my chair, like, what the hell was that? Like, I, th that's the shock moment I'm talking about. When her head explodes, I was just, head explodes, I was just like, what? What just happened? Did I blink? Did I miss something? And then like, it's, it, it's literally like 30 or 60 seconds of the girl just sitting there staring at the dead body with an exploded head. head. And you're just left sitting there for like 30 or 60 seconds, like, what, the, what, 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 what was that? And then the camera pans over to reveal a guy standing there with a gun. 
and the, the guy is surrounded by five other, other people and they all dress really smartly like some sort of government like you know like black suit men and black kind of thing they're all in like really smart black suits the guy was with a gun and he's just shot the girl in the head he's just standing there with these other five guys and then the two guys approach the dead body, pick it up and drag it outside and the girl's still just lying there and she, you know, at this point like, I, me just describing this doesn't do it justice like, how unexpected and shocking it is when the girl gets her head shot so, so I, I, for starters, you're like, okay, what the, who sh what the hell, why did her head explode? then you realise someone shot her in the head and you're, now you're like, who the hell are these guys? then they drag the body up and they're like, what, now you're like, what are they up to? Like, who are these guys? Like, me describing it really doesn't do it justice. Like, the amount of confusion and shock, like, the shock that, that you get from this moment, it's great. And I was just sitting there like, okay, come on, come on, what, what, what's going on? Like, I was really, I was really into it. I really dug it. It was great. So, it turns out this is um, a cult. The family is actually, they're not, like, at first it's just like, a wife and a husband, two crazy dudes, kidnap this girl as a kid and they kid, they seem to kidnap people because they're psychos and it turns out then it's not just a standalone thing it turns out they're part of a cult and this cult they torture people in a specific way so like they hold them captive starve them they um they, they give them they starve them but give them enough food to keep them alive and they keep them isolated without any human contact and they beat the shit out of them regularly like once a day they like punch them around for like an hour or something a day and they, they just keep them in isolation for like years and years and years and it, like that's what I'm talking about that would be pretty horrific like when this girl wakes up to find herself in this situation I'd be like like if I was in that like I was putting myself in that situation it'd be terrifying and like, I guess I would just try to bite my own tongue off and choke to death or something or st strangle myself with the chain like the first thing you would do is try to kill yourself I, I would try to kill myself as fast as I could like that would be a horrible situation to be in but, so it turns out this cult organization, like I really like the direction this movie, this movie went in. This cult, they torture people in a specific way, like keeping them isolated, starving them, torturing them. Um, they torture them like that, and they hope, they believe that if you do that to someone, torture someone in, in this specific way, it will get to the point where the pain and like what they are experiencing is too painful, too agonizing to be. So it'll get to the point where the person will shut off, literally just shut off their brain and they will go to the afterlife but they're still kind of alive, they shut off their brain and go to the afterlife. So they plan on um, torturing someone to the extent where they will go to this state of martyrs, I think it's called a state of martyrdom or state of martyrs, hence the title. So they believe they can torture someone so much they'll go into this state of martyrs, martyrs or whatever and they will see the afterlife and they plan on waking them up from this state at once they've gone into the state and asking them what happens to you after you die because that's the cult's that's the goal of the cult they want to see they want to know what happens to you after you die so that's why they are torturing these people they want to get them into this state so they see the afterlife and then wake them up out of the state and ask them what happens to you after you die and there's like tw there's like 30 people like at the end ev everyone in the cult gathers and there's like so many like really like old people like business suited kind of guys it's like it's really interesting I, I really like the cult angle of the film and what like the motives of the cult it's great and the feeling of dread it was great so what they do they bring the girl in they like handcuff her to a tree or something and they handcuff her to a tree and then the leader of the cult is like this girl this woman is the leader of the cult she comes in and starts talking to the girl like, it's, I, I, like, I love the thoughts that, the, of the fact that had the girl just left the house after her friend died, she would have lived. But the fact that she decided to stay in the house for like 20 minutes caused her to get, just get screwed over. Like the only reason she's going to suffer such a horrible, horrible death is because she decided to help her friend out and the fact that she decided to stay in this house for 20 more minutes. Like had she left once her friend had died, she would have lived but the fact that she just just because she stayed there for like 10 minutes longer that's the reason she suffers a terrible death and I really liked I just liked that and, and like when you think of it like that I just think it's pretty cool when you think of it like that so they handcuff her to a chair and then like the boss or the leader of the organization comes in and she basically explains to the girl 
Um, she's basically like an exposition device. She explains to her that we are a cult and organization. This is what we do. We're trying to get, we're trying to torture people to the state of martyrs. And she like talks to her about all of these experiments she's done on like different on people. Like they've tried different methods of torture to get people into the state. Like we've tried blindfolding someone, which is the girl you rescued. Um, you know stuff like that. Like she's taught. She's just telling the girl about the cult and she's just telling her about how they've been doing things and stuff and this goes on for like five or ten minutes and the girl is just like sitting there in silence okay just ran out of space on the camcorder so I had to delete a few videos to make space on the hard drive for more well more footage so um, as I was saying back to martyrs so the girl's kind of just sitting there in silence and it is really tense the, the woman, like the head of the organization, when she's speaking, she's explaining the state of martyrs where you go to the afterlife and how they've been torturing the victims. Not at one point does she ever say, you're going to be the next victim. Or like, not ever, there's never a point where she's like, she's like, okay, um, so you're going to be, a, you know, something like, you're our next victim. Uh, I hope you're paying attention because this is happening to you. It's not one point where she ever says something like that. She's just talking normally, very casually about it. And it's really uncomfortable because, like, she never says, like, yeah, you're our next victim. She never actually says that, but it's clear, it's obvious, this girl is the next victim of the organization. It's, it's obvious she's the next person to be kept in captivity for, like, years and years and years and years in isolation with, you know, being starved and tortured every day. Uh, it's just extremely tense. And, you, like, you can see the girls kind of sitting there, like, the, the, ac the actress is great. Um, she like I guess her facial expressions like like I said is another language but she doesn't even speak throughout the whole entire sequence at least as far as I can remember she doesn't speak she doesn't scream either she just sits there really uncomfortably because she knows what's going to happen to her and there's like no way she can bargain her way out of it there's no way she can like physically break you know get out of it like there's no way she can overpower everyone like all the guys and everyone there and there's no way she can like talk her way out of the situation there's no way no way she can bargain her way out and she's just uncomfortably he's kind of just sitting there waiting for her demise it's great and of course then they like drug her they knock her out and then she wakes up the next like the next shot is her waking up in a cell chained up to the wall and then like she's just the rest of the film is her being tortured so like we we get to see like her like they never state how long she's been there but like the deterioration of her clothes and like the bruises she gets and everything like and and the state she goes into that that seriously that really like heavily implies it's been a long time like I, 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 I would assume like a few years possibly um so I guess at the point she does shut off her brain just as the organization organization would thought she would and for the final um now she's in the state um they get one they give her one final boost like one final kick into into the state of death and get her, get her into the afterlife. They skin her alive, so I guess the pain is so immense she goes into the afterlife, and she does. She goes into the afterlife, and then like she, uh, she, the leader of the organization is called to, um, you know, she wants to find out obviously, so she's the first one who should know. So she asks the girl to whisper into her ear, like, what happens to you? What, what did you see? So she whispers something into her ear, of course we don't see. And then she's like, oh, okay. And then she like calls the whole entire organization in. The whole entire, like every member of the organization gathers in the house. They're all there in the living room, kind of dining, like sitting there drinking, talking to, to each other. And then like the, this guy, which seems to be the, the leader's right hand man, ha right hand man stands at the, at the top of the stairs. And he's like, at exactly 7 p.m. today, on the 24th of June, 2008. Uh, Wherever the girl's name is, uh, Sarah Smith, or whatever her name is, uh, entered the state of martyrs. Exactly at, at 8 12 pm, she came out of the state. And she told Madam, whatever the leader's name is, at 8 15 pm, what happens to you after you die. So, like, at this point, she's the only person that knows this. The leader of the organization at this point in the story is the only one who knows this. What happens to you after you die? She's the only one that heard, actually heard uh, the girl who was skinned alive say this. Uh, so she's in the bathroom kind of preparing herself for a speech to give to everyone. So at this point, you know they're not going to answer what happens to you after you die. You know they're not going to answer that at this point. But instead what happens is just so badass and cool. I really like what happens. So what happens, she's in the bathroom, the guy's talking to her from the outside. 
and they're talking for a while and she's kind of like taking off her makeup and stuff taking off the, the like thing on her head and then they get and then i think he says something he says something and then she's like uh do you think you she she says something like what do you think happens to you after you die she asks him through the bathroom door while she's taking something out of her bag at this point you do cash on to what's going on here you realize what she's about to do like i caught on to it like when she says that and she pull, she's like pulling something out of her purse you know what's about to happen then he's like i couldn't possibly i couldn't possibly ever imagine he says something along those lines then her, her exact words are keep doubting and then she pulls out again and blows her head off and I, I i really like that i'm not sure if, i'm not sure what the general opinion in is on the ending but i just thought that really simple line keep doubting i thought it sounded really badass i really like that line and then she just takes out her gun and like, she says, keep doubting, and only just then does the gun come on screen for the first time, and then she just shoves it into her mouth and blows her head off, and then the film ends. I thought that was fantastic. I, I dug the ending so much. I thought that was great. And, um, yeah, that, that's, that's the spoiler section of the review. It wasn't really a review, was it? It was more of, a, like, a recap of the film. But I guess I'm just explaining to people who haven't seen the film and are just watching the spoiler section of the review what was happening. Otherwise, they'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say from artists. Great, great film. I really, I, I dug it. I was really into it. I really liked it. Uh, so that's my review of Martyrs. So, uh, Martyrs? Um, Martyrs, yeah. That's how you pronounce it, I think. So, um, thanks for watching the review, and that's it. See ya.